Welcome to I Lecture Online. Now for something that is a little bit of a brain twister, but let's see if we can think our way through it. Here we have two balances, one at the bottom, one between the ceiling and our experiment right here. We have a beaker that has a weight of two pounds containing a liquid that has a weight of three pounds, and inside the liquid suspended is a block, call it block A, and block A is suspended from the top balance and it's inside the liquid. Now, balance one at the top reads five pounds, balance two at the bottom reads 15 pounds, and we're told that the volume of the block, block A, is equal to one cubic foot. Matter of fact, you know what? Let's change that. Let's make it 0.1 of a cubic foot. 0 0.1 cubic foot. That's probably going to be better. All right. Now, the question is, what is the weight density of the liquid. So in terms of the imperial units, we typically think about the weight density, pounds per cubic foot, and that's what we're trying to find for the liquid. So how do we do that? Well, we have two possible equations. We have the balance at the top and we have the balance at the bottom. So let's identify all the forces. So when we take a look here, notice that we have the weight of block A, so that would be the mg of block A, which is pulling down, and now we have the buoyancy force of block A which is pushing up. So using those two forces, those are the two forces that are applicable to balance one, we can say that the weight of balance, the weight measured by balance one, which is five pounds, is equal to mg minus the buoyancy force. So let's go ahead and work with that equation first. So the weight of the block can be written a little bit differently. We can say that the mass by definition is equal to, or maybe not the mass, but let's start with the density. The density is equal to the mass divided by the volume, so the mass is equal to the density times the volume and plug that in here. So five pounds is equal to, and let's label this, we're dealing with balance one first here. So this here is the weight of the block, so that can be written as the density times the volume of the block, so the density of the block times the volume of the block times g minus the buoyancy force which is the density of the liquid times the volume of the displaced liquid which is the same as the volume of the block times g. So let's see what we know here. So we have five pounds is equal to the density of the block times g which is unknown. So the density times g of the block which is unknown but we do know the volume of the block, which is 0 0.1 cubic foot. And then we subtract from that the density of the liquid, which is what we're looking for. So the density of the liquid times G, again, it's the weight density that we're looking for, times the volume of the block, which again is 0 0.1 cubic foot. We can then pull out a cubic foot. So we have 5 pounds equals 0 0.1 cubic foot, so we factor out a cubic foot, and then we have left the weight density of the block minus the weight density of the liquid. Now notice, we don't know the weight density of the block, and we don't know the weight density of the liquid, but here we have 0.1 cubic feet, so if we then finish the equation, if we then divide both sides by 0.1 cubic feet, we can say that 50 pounds per cubic foot is equal to the weight density of the block minus the weight density of the liquid. So this is what the first equation gives us using balance one. Notice we have two unknowns. We're looking for this. This is the weight, the weight density of the liquid. Well, since we don't know both of them, we can't solve that. So now let's go to balance number two. So balance number two, we have uh, relative to balance number two, notice that the weight of this block is not going to be relevant to balance number two, so maybe I should get a different color. But the buoyancy force is relevant to scale number two, so to balance number two, the buoyancy force. We do have the weight of the liquid, so the mg of the liquid, and we do have the mg of the beaker. So we have the weight of the beaker, the weight of the liquid, and the buoyancy force. Now, of course, 
if the buoyancy force pushes up against the block, it pushes down against the scale down there. So actually, it might be better to write the buoyancy force like this. Again, what I did was the buoyancy force pushes up relative to the block, but pushes down relative to the scale. So the scale has to also include the buoyancy force, the weight of the beaker, the weight of the liquid. So all three together should add up to the weight measured by balance number two. So let's write that down. So balance two, we have the 15 pounds, right? 15 pounds is going to be equal to the buoyancy force plus the weight of the liquid plus the weight of the beaker. Not the block, but the beaker. All right. So notice we wrote the, the word beaker up there for the weight of the beaker. So we have 15 pounds equals to the buoyancy force, which is the density of the liquid times the volume of the block times G plus the weight of the liquid, which is equal to 3 pounds plus the weight of the beaker, which is 2 pounds. So notice we can subtract the 5 pounds from both sides, so end up with 10 pounds is equal to the density of the liquid, so the density times G of the liquid, because we want to pull that together, that's the weight density, times the volume of the block, which is 0 0.1 cubic foot. If we then divide both sides by 0.1 cubic foot, we have 100 pounds per cubic foot is equal to the weight density of the liquid, which is what we're looking for. There's our answer. Now, Let's go back up here, even though they didn't ask for it. It's kind of an interesting to know. So let's plug in the 100, uh, let's see here, the minus 100 pounds. So now we know that this is equal to the weight density of the block minus 100 pounds per cubic foot. If we then move that to the other side, we can then conclude that the Minus 100 to the other side becomes 150. 150 pounds per cubic foot is going to be equal to the weight density of the block. And so by using equation number one and number two combined, we can also solve for the weight density of the block, which is 150 pounds per cubic foot. The weight density of the liquid is 100 pounds per cubic foot, which is what we're looking for. And that is how we solve that problem. That's how it's done.